Hi Matt, it's great to speak with you today. Thanks for featuring in our Social Pharma Faces series. Now you're the first person we've spoken to from within a pharma company, so where do you think social media sits within the industry? Thanks Paul. Um, currently I think social media is people's common understanding such as Facebook, Twitter. If I'm really honest I think it has no place in pharmaceuticals. I, I know um, some of the bigger companies are trying to explore the uh, opportunity this may provide, but I feel currently that the danger of compliance outweighs the benefits for us. Um, if I think to elements where I have seen strong social media examples from pharmaceuticals, I see them in YouTube and LinkedIn. Um, so it's an area we look to push the envelope, but routinely are concerned about compliance uh, and the guidance is ambiguous for us. So it's something we avoid routinely. So what differentiates the, the areas we've talked about within social media? I think with elements such as YouTube, we have a, an element of control over the content because it's not going to change once it's been published. I think where there's real-time feedback such as Facebook, such as Twitter, uh, there's real anxiety within pharmaceuticals because we have no online immediate control. We can't remain compliant when it comes to things such as adverse events. Uh, and I think where digital offers us in many areas the route to compliance, we can synchronise, we can update immediately. In other areas such as social media, we can't control it. Now social media is obviously just one aspect of the digital space, so what opportunities do you see for pharma within the overall online environment? Currently we, we traditionally use a lot of the online resources of websites and broadcast technology. Uh, I think we're starting to see a lot more offline development and the speed of growth in this area is, is profound within pharmaceuticals and the rationale for that is that we can invest in uh, writing something once, owning that technology and then publishing it many times in different areas. Uh, and then driving people to our online assets or online community where these, these assets, these digital assets will sit for us. So they're the areas which I see fast growth and opportunities for me as a, a pharmaceutical man marketing manager. How do you think the digital space can best be used to reach healthcare providers, patients or perhaps payers by the pharma companies then? Um, the exciting area is the platform technology and I move just away from your standard iPhone where healthcare professionals, pharmacists are starting to use that technology to access their educational material, to access their promotional material from pharmaceutical companies onto platform technology which uh, really provides an opportunity for those pharmaceutical companies to reach the customers either with a sales force or without a sales force and to, to capture feedback around the use of their resource and what, what elements that really resonate with the customers. And what do you think are the key challenges to developing digital strategies and integrating those with the other elements of the marketing mix? I think traditionally we've looked at the hard copy print media, the integrated communication plan has always been hard copy with high production co costs, high print costs and high distribution costs. I think what digital allows us is to uh, invest at the front end but then republish that and distribute stuff at a much lower cost. But with that in pharmaceuticals I think there's a real uh, rush to move towards digital and I think as a, a brand manager, as a marketing manager, I think we have to find a blended approach to this where we start to use the right resource for the right people and that will be a blend of print media, hard copy, integrated communication with t different technologies which allow us to reach our customers in different ways. Do you think the use of digital channels can perhaps level the playing field in terms of the smaller companies when it comes to competing with big pharma? Potentially in terms of sales numbers and sales teams that we have out there talking to our customers because it allows us to invest in the same technologies, it allows us to reach a broader range of customers and potentially customers who are harder to reach. Uh, but I think the bigger companies are really finding the, the route for us. So they're looking at pushing the envelope, seeing where they can have successes, and then it allows the smaller companies to adopt those uh, techniques and, and try to implement them. I guess the key question is how can you measure the success of digital initiatives? Uh, the metrics, digital for us, and this is why I feel there's a real rush towards digital at the moment within pharmaceutical marketing. Uh, the metrics that provide us are tenfold in relation to the print media because um, if we look at industry standards, so Google Analytics, we can look at how many unique users, what the traffic's like, the bounce rate uh, of our websites, of our assets, and we can start to understand where the traffic's coming from, where are we driving people to, and where are they coming from? Are they direct or are they referred? And what that allows us to do is, as, as brand managers, as marketing managers within pharmaceuticals, is to refine our plan as we move. It's real-time data, uh, and it allows us to review it at the end of each quarter or as we like, uh, and then reinvest where we're finding that we're getting the most benefits.
Now, from your perspective, Matt, if you look at what's taken place by pharma in the digital landscape, what do you think has been most successful? What stands out to you? I think the elements which have a blend of the items we've talked about previously, I think some of the big pharmaceutical companies such as GSK and Janssen are already pushing the envelope uh, in terms of the quality they're delivering through some of the social media elements such as YouTube. And I think I talk specifically around patient awareness, healthcare, uh, professional awareness of disease areas, patient education. Uh, and that provides us not only a route to reach out to patients around disease awareness, but also to capture feedback and metrics around how valuable that is. Now you work within the pain area, so when you look at what's available out there for patients, healthcare providers, what useful resources do you see in that space? I think for me, currently in pain, there's not a huge amount out there because it's not been a high priority focus area for the government. I think as we move with the government towards providing uh, the services around the patient, digital elements allow us to provide educational tools for patients, patient awareness programs, disease awareness programs, which help both the patient manage their disease and the healthcare professional manage and diagnose the disease. So it becomes much more of a collaborative approach. Matt, thanks very much for your time to talk with Pharma Forum today. Thanks, Paul.